you see how the dialogue develops. The question of personality is important also in the press and the thing. For example, we were at a time in the late 70s, if the word oil is mentioned, people immediately think of Yamani. If you mention Yamani, people only think of oil and OPEC. Nobody thinks of Saudi Arabia, but Yamani, because he was so uh, active and a, a very ma a master of manipulation, which is uh, fantastic. Then you have the change when Ali Naimi came, which is another school. You had Hisham Nader for a while, but then when he came to Ali Naimi, it's another school. A man from the industry, he started from the bottom, he went up, he does his homework, he chooses his people very wisely, and he doesn't make stupid statements. Whenever he speaks, he speaks very clearly and very wisely, and he impresses people. It's important to think what the ministers, because the ministers, certain ministers, make the image for the organization. Let me you know, just jump in. How important at that time do you think the transition was that the national oil companies, I mean, you mentioned the individuals, but the national oil companies built people like Alan Amy and like yourself. They became credible, powerful institutions that gave the ministers the, the ability to be uh, stronger, the ability yeah. to be greater technocrats. On right. that, also, one has to be fair. I mean, when you talk about what happened in Saudi Arabia, the development of uh, people, uh, it's not really the Saudi government as much as it was Aramco who started the training center because the companies felt the pressure, the social pressure, the pressure of the country, and they had to do something about it. They felt that they do something in the, in the name of social responsibility. So they started these scholarships, started these uh, technical schools and things, and from these, people came up. In other places, they were sending scholarships as well, and financing scholarships. Mm -hmm. So we have to give them some credit for that, but they didn't do it for love. They did it considering their future, and they will breed some people who will support them. But it worked the other way, that the people they bred did not support them. They nationalized them and took their place. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just ask you, Matt, on that point. Uh, Ali said that nationalization wasn't the intention. It became very much the, the fine model. How important do you think that was for the individual countries and then collectively as OPEC as an organization? I agree with Ramzi in one respect, you know, that uh, the, the group that Ali belonged to, Ali Naimi, was of the nationalization or the social responsibility part, but I was not. I was part of the gov The government decided that, you know, uh, it's, it wasn't Aramco only at that time when I started school. Uh, it was uh, the Ministry of Higher Education. They had, we had about maybe 7,000 Saudis in, in uh, the U.S. at that time, just like now. Now the the, the Ministry of Higher Education have also separate from the Aramco scholarship. From, separate from Aramco, Aramco did uh, what uh, Dr. Ramsey said w with people like Naimi. You know, only few selected people were you know taken and that was and pre nationalized Aramco. Yeah, yeah, pre nationalized Aramco, and then they moved them up the ladder, and then they took over. Uh, Saudi Aramco and and uh, maybe late uh, 70s or early 80s when Saudi took over Saudi Aramco completely. But they did they did have training centers. Yes, yeah, they the did for uh, li lower level yeah. jobs, you know, like craftsmen uh, and and so on. But uh, uh, but in an, in any case, uh, you know. Uh, the, the Saudi government decided to take over Aramco completely and nationalize it, and they had a deal with, with the mother companies where they took over the shares at that time and became uh, fully owned by Saudi government. Ali, please. Uh, just pull the mic a little bit closer to you. Yeah. Right. Uh, just for the sake of uh, clarification over here, that when we talk about the nationalization, I, 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 what I'm trying to say, at least, I would say this is, was not the UAE agenda. 
uh, to go for the nationalization. That, that was not in the agenda. What the UE agenda, I, th I believe the, our, the international oil companies been part of our business from day one and that's intact with the OPEC or without OPEC. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, so that's in terms of UE agenda, I would say. In fact, that turns out to be uh, a good policy and very positive policy, uh, whereas uh, other OPEC member countries started to invite back international oil companies to rejoin Okay, uh, but uh, I w I'm very pleased to share that UAE at that, uh, at that stage of time, we have been well established and pioneers in terms of maintaining the relationship with international oil companies. This is when I clarify nationalization. When I talk about the OPEC organization uh, as an organization and become more of economical organization than politi political, I, I refer to many different aspects. Uh, in terms of being responsive, in terms of uh, being uh, part of the dialogue between producers and consumers, listening to the consumer side, meeting them, listening what are the areas of their concerns, making ourselves as OPEC heard what are our concerns. So it's, uh, although there has been not, I would say, uh, and a very a strong, uh, outcomes, but at least you made your, uh, your partners to hear what are your concerns, okay, and what, and you listen to their concerns, that's uh, another area. And another area which is important, uh, touched on by Dr. Ramsey here, that uh, being responsive in terms of when there's a wars, in terms of there's a, and a disruptions of supply, uh, the OPEC has been maintaining and a spare capacity, which is referred by His Excellency the Minister, that it's expensive, it's, 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 it's costly to maintain a certain capacity, uh, and, and that's, you can call a spare for, uh, for, a, uh, for any shortage, for any disturbance. Uh, there's, I can name so many disturbances have been taking place for the, for the last few years. One of them when Venezuela for three months shut down their production which is we're talking about around three million barrels per day. They had a national strike. Is that they had a national right? strike yeah. for about three months. Mm -hmm. uh, the wars we refer to, it, the almost the production of Iraq and, uh, and Kuwait uh, put on hold. I can't re remember how long, but at least for one month. So that's, that's uh, and the OPEC stepped in, uh, who, who had the capacity, were able to, to step in and maintain that capacity. Something very important, which is we are maybe we are missing, uh, uh, what is strengthen the OPEC support is Venezuela. Venezuela been playing an, uh, a player in terms of creating the OPEC, but also Venezuela being being uh, or been a uh, so great support to the OPEC. Whom I refer to is uh, President Chavez. Maybe a lot of people think he's not popular and he's very. Uh, uh, radical in his own and the way he says things very harsh, but when it comes into the OPEC, the President Chavez is a great supporter to the but OPEC. You can certainly see if you look at the history before he came to power, yes, yes. there was a lot of problems between Venezuela and uh, Saudi in yes. particular in the late 90s and, and, and prices collapsed. Well, a very important Sean to mention over here, and Ramsey, uh, he knows the history better than me over here, that Venezuela, whenever there has been agreement in terms of coordination, coordinating production, Venezuela says something, and what is taking place, something else. Okay, it has been all the time uh, upfront, and it has been very difficult, difficult situation for the OPEC how to maneuver this. However, when soon Chavez step in as a president, he he sharpened his position with the OPEC. He been a great support to the OPEC. He he. Uh, OPEC summit uh, held in Venezuela in Caracas, and at the time, as he proudly proudly said, that uh, he the oil pr 